What's up everyone? Look at there. There's the topic of our video for the day. Do you happen to know what that is? Do you know how to remove it? Do you know how to reinstall it? If not, come on. Follow along with the video. Let's do this. What's up all my Jeep and friends? Today's video is about that wheel bearing. So I get up this morning, pick that front end up off the ground so I can check ball joints and checking wheel bearings. Sure enough, the first that passenger side wheel, I grab hold of it. Bump, 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 bump. I rock it back and forth a little bit. Top, bottom, like this right here. And I can feel it, just a little subtle movement. I said, dang on wheel bearing. So everyone, that's what our video is about today. But if this is the first time you've landed on my Power Addicts YouTube channel, you need to hit that subscribe button down below because I do Jeep videos mostly. But I've also got motorcycles. I've got cars. You, you never know really what I'm coming up with next. So hit that subscribe button. That way you might have a little, a little something. So let's roll on with the video and get this thing done. All right, everyone, I'm pretty sure I'm in a race with the weather right now. So let's see if we can knock this thing out pretty quick. All right, let's get on this. First thing we need to do, that caliper's got to come off because then you got to pull your uh, brake disc off. Caliper's going to be right here, there, and there's the other one. So take the seat bolts off and you'll be able to take your caliper off. Okay, those two bolts back here I forgot to mention are 10 millimeter, but once you get them pulled out, you can take your caliper or rock it backwards like you show here, then, because it's gonna pivot right here. So once you get it right back so far, you can take it, slide it upward, and you have the caliper off the brake disc. Then we'll slide the brake disc off. Okay, the brake disc slides right off. I didn't show you that, but they just slide right off, no big deal. All right, then we got three here, three of these right here. Those are 13 millimeter, 12 point. You got one there. One there, and one right there. Those three got to come off, which will release the unit bearing loose from the spindle. But bear in mind, whenever you take those three bolts out, which come through the unit bearing right here, the hub bearing, hub assembly, whatever they want to call them, bear in mind you don't want to take them completely out yet because we also got to make sure you get the uh, axle assembly out of the unit bearing because you got splines up inside here. The splines engage when the front axle here turns. It turns this, which makes your whole front tire, you know, makes your front tire turn. So, you go ahead and break these loose, back them out part of the way if you want to. That's all fine and dandy. But be, remember, we gotta get this right here out too, so. Okay, getting this right here off. Okay, we've got these broke loose. You can see the bolts are set back, but I haven't, no broke. You wait the screwdriver here in a minute to break all that loose, but we'll get to that in a minute. Now we're going to see if we can get this axle free up. First thing you do is take that cotter pin out. And whenever you stretch it, whenever you straighten it out, you got to push it down. Because that key's got to come out this way. Okay? Now for those of you who've never done this before, be prepared. Because you got this great big nut back behind this. And I've got a 36 millimeter socket right there. So I'm going to throw my impact on it and pull that nut off there. But you're going to need the great big socket. This is a 36 millimeter. Okay, once the nuts off, you got this flat washer back here. There you go, pull it out. And you see, I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up, there's splines inside that hub assembly right there. That axle here, which is all this right here, this right here has got the splines on it that's going through this right here, which you'll see here in just a moment. Hopefully it's gonna cooperate, and hopefully that shaft come out of there easily, because sometimes they are a bear to get them out of there. This axle shaft, I've seen them oftentimes seized inside the unit bearing. Then you got to get a three jaw puller that will cross the face right here, hook your jaws here. One jaw go here, here, and here. Then you'll take and put the center push uh, cone in the middle right here and you'll push. You'll crank down it, crank it, crank it, crank it. They'll push that shaft out of there. But uh, you know what? I rarely, rarely easy, have a good, easy time with anything. But look. It's not seized. Such a blessing. Now, now that we got this right here to where it's you know good to go, we're ready for the axle shaft. Now we got these right here to deal with. So I'm gonna go ahead and take these the rest of the way out here and here. Take them the rest of the way out and see if we get lucky enough to get this unit bearing off the spindle now. So at this point, I'm gonna take my screwdriver, stick it behind here, break the hub assembly loose from the spindle. So let's see what's going to happen. If you look right here, you've got these little, uh, I don't know what you call them, little gaps here, I guess. 
oftentimes you can stick a screwdriver inside there and work that bearing back this you no know, work it back this way to pull it out of the spindle well I'll show you something this won't be a pain in the butt I broke the screwdriver so now I want to get something a little bit more mega duty to beat that rascal out of there because my like you'll see here just a moment but the bearing just needs to come straight back at you because you see right here it is if I'm facing it the bearing needs to come straight back at me so how many times if I can beat this rascal off here because at this point I'm replacing this whole assembly here it doesn't matter if I damage this part here okay so I can get a hammer and beat the out of it see what happens if I need to okay look at that I broke the screwdriver again but I'm getting separation and here's actually a good point use your brain or if I should be using my brain, put it that way. Don't use a screwdriver to pry with. That's not what they're made for. Get a, get a pry bar, hammer that baby back up inside there. And more times than not, you're going to have an easier time. But I'm having one of those impatient race in the rain moments. And, well, I'm just doing it things the hard way, apparently. But if you get a pry bar, get in behind here, it's a lot easier. But you see I've got separation. And I'm taking the hammer, hitting on the back side of the, of the uh, hub assembly here. And it's cracking it loose, but I just gotta work with it because it is kind of seized inside the uh, spindle. So I'm just going to work with it to get it out of there. And you see right there, it's starting to separate finally. So use a real pry bar instead of a screwdriver. It's a junk, cheap screwdriver anyway, but still, the point is. Okay, this thing's being a beast. So what I end up having to do take your screwdrivers to come in at an angle this way. One comes at an angle that way because if you go straight in, you'll bottom out on the edge of the bearing here. You'll see here in a minute, once the bearing comes out, that is a flange that goes up inside the spindle. So a screwdriver comes down this way, this one comes at an angle, and I've got a chisel coming down that way. So therefore, it doesn't bottom out on the flange of the bearing, but it wedges and pushes it outward as you hammer them in. And there she is. Did another wedging. You see that lip right here, which I pull the bearing all the rest of the way off. You see right there is a lip that's wedged up inside the spindle here. And that's why it was sticking. Because that's probably the original bearing, to be honest with you. And this thing's, I know I've had wheeling and some water stuff. And the person before me had our farm play, as a play toy. So I'm really surprised the bearings lasted that long. So now's a good time to check that huge one if you want to check it and change it. Okay, before you put this thing back together, take you some grease or anesthesia or something. And right there, right inside that lip, which is where that rides on here. So put you some grease on so it doesn't seize up. You see how hard it was getting, in, uh, getting the other one off. Grease inside the splines here, grease on the splines there. Really, you can't get over zillions on the grease. You really can't. Because you don't want the season up issue. Because in the event, I come change this huge one out later on. I don't want to be a, don't want to be a pain to tail coming off. So grease everything up. Before you put it back on, make sure don't forget your back your uh, dust plate. So let's put this thing back together. Okay, put this bearing back in. What you do not want to do is get one bolt started and crank that bolt down. Then do another and get crank the bolt down. Because remember that face, that lip right there, has to go smoothly and centered up inside the spindle. So if you crank one side down, either you're going to lock it a uh, hub up inside the spindle or you end up breaking an ear so what you do is you get all your bolts get them sitting flush on your spindle here then come around about two turns each or something like that even a turn each if you want to get really picky that way you'll press that bearing up inside the spindle assembly nice smooth and easy and you won't cause any kind of uh, damage to the spindle so take your time tighten them up little by little and just keep going around in a circle this one a little bit, this one a little bit, that down a little bit, and just keep working in a circle until you press that bearing up inside there. Take your time, don't get in no big hurry with it. Okay, while you got this thing taken apart, upper ball joint, there's your grease fitting for that. Shoot some grease it, huh? Tie rod in. Yeah. Then your tie rod ends. Now, y'all gonna call me out on my tie rod ends because look at the grease shooting out of the cups. Uh, this front end right here is, I'm running 307 gears with 35 inch tires. That is a bad combination. combination fifth gear don't exist for me anymore so my other jeep that you guys may have seen in the past videos my project rust bucket it's got 355 gear sets under it so i'll eventually build the gear set or build the other front end on that other jeep swap these out put the 355s in this 
then I'm going to score me a set of uh, another gears out of a Cherokee to re-gear these differentials for the Project Rust Bucket. Because I want probably somewhere around three set, and I probably actually want about 14 gears in the other Jeep if I can. So, yes, y'all can call me out if you want to, but I'm going to rebuild another front end, front axle, and replace all this right here. <laughs> They're still solid, the cups are just fried. So, shoot a little grease in there to help them out. So, therefore, you can't call me out on it because I called myself. All right, torque that baby, tighten that baby down good, tighten these down. Save yourself a little potential headache later on, too. The surface of the, uh, where the rotor slides on here, put your little anesthesia or grease or something right there. That'll keep, if you get out playing in the water and creeks and stuff, and any kind of rust gets between the brake disc and the hub here, they could rust together, seize together. So if you put your little grease in there, it'll help prevent that. So a little quick, easy tip to make life easy on you. Okay, now we got to be sure you put this thing back on. Put it on. Oh no, it won't work. Why? Because you now you got this little finger right here right in front of the hole. Can't do that. Take it off, rotate it a little bit, boom, there it is, it lines up. And put your key back in. Now some of you people are gonna call me out, hey, you're reusing an old key. This one was still in very good shape. It, I mean it bent easily, no cracks, no stress cracks when I did it. If you really are like totally uh new parts Nazis replace it put it in but I'm not going to I don't have one here and I ain't going after one so therefore slide that baby through okay you know what I can't do this with a camera in my hand so therefore I just need to put that through and I'll show you in just a moment bend your key back further enough that you're not going to be hitting the rotor or when you put the wheel on that's going to hit here you just want to roll it back further enough that one it'll hold that thing in place not to keep not fall out two don't really bend it back further enough it becomes a pain in the tail to get them out if you need to so let's put this tire back on, take her for a test drive, see how she rolls. One thing I got Froggy in checking because I'm not I'm trying to actually race the weather right now. It's about to start raining on me. Whenever you check a wheel bearing, what you want to do is get the tire up off the ground. It's easier, you get a lot better response if you have the tire on because you want the added weight of the tire. Hand here, hand here. What you want to do is pull a rock back and forth like this. Normally a loose wheel bearing, you can feel it pivot right along this area right here. And if you get that's kind of iffy but most of the time you can feel a wheel bearing rock now, i've got the new one on now of course but another thing too if you got a bad ball joint and you do like you know you rock it like this you'll feel the pivot move deeper back inside the spindle area but if it's a wheel bearing and you rock it you'll feel it right in this area right here so that's a, you know, a way of testing do you have a bad wheel bearing but sometimes when a wheel bearing isn't completely shot like the one i had you may not feel it as well but sometimes you may have to just roll it a little bit rock it, roll it a little bit, rock it, because you're looking for that bad spot inside the bearing. So, quick easy tip trying to figure out how to, is it a bad wheel bearing or is it a, or is it a, a ball joint? Okay, obviously here's the old bearing that come out. See how it gouged up right there trying to wedge it maybe out of there? So, I can turn it like straight here, and I can tell that it's much more loose than the replacement bearing. But where it gives it away is like grabbing the body here and finding that sweet spot. There it is. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. There's a little bit of subtle movement with a bearing rocking back and forth right there. There it is. Bad wheel bearing. Look at her. Mm -hmm. Look at her right there. She's happy now. She's got a new wheel bearing. See, I think what happened is... Um, I kind of bought a new starter from a Mustang because it's so close to firing up my Mustang. And I think she's seen that starter and she says, mm, mm, that don't fit me, that don't fit me. That looks like one of the more forward thing parts. And she threw a fit and said, you know what? I'm gonna make sure he works on me this weekend. Uh huh. So I'm gonna puke a wheel bearing. Yeah, she's kind of sassy like that. So, you know, do what you gotta do, take care of my girl. So everyone, if you enjoyed that video, hit me with that thumbs up down below if you learned something definitely hit that thumbs up subscribe if you have it so you'll be notified of these videos when i release them you never know you might learn a little something something or i may do something stupid and you'll miss it if you don't subscribe who knows you know also leave some cool comments down below you know saying thanks for the videos or hey ask me a question whatever it is you feel like compulsive to do as long as it's educational as long as it's nice and good cool cool so everyone i really appreciate you hanging out with me peace out later y'all